Yes, good morning. My name is Ibafi Patricia Tops. I work for the radio community. Yes, thank you, Ibafi Patricia. I'm called Lole Laila Lole, who is the executive director of South Sudan Network of People Living in TV in South Sudan. Thank you very much, Uncle Lole. Uh, maybe briefly, can you tell us about when you were first diagnosed and how it impacted your life uh, emotionally and physically, and what were some of the challenges you faced? Uh, thank you, Patricia. It is a long story. If I narrate it, the long story is very far back in 1995 when the tuba was in under the situation of the war and the testing was not available, no facility, no everything. And the hospital was only treating other diseases rather than the HIV-8, because HIV-8 was, uh, was uh, discovered in South Sudan in 1996, and in the war, nothing had happened or even training for the HIV was not there. That 1995, I lost a child in the hospital with a disease that I couldn't understand. Uh, then my family turned into TV, and we have been training her on the TV because the treatment on TV was there for the first time and the second time. When I see the continuation of the treatment on TV for the third time, I was able to send my wife to Khartoum because Khartoum has already started testing. That was in 2001. 2001. Then when this was taken there, she was found positive. Then when she came back, I also tried here. Here in South Sudan, it's called screening because there was no testing. That was in 2010, 2001, 2002. It was early screening. So from there, I also traveled to Khartoum in 2002. Then I discovered I was positive together with my wife. And uh, my wife has lost almost three kids without knowing what is happening. And that was uh, 1985, 1988, and then 20, 20, uh, in 19, 20, 21, then the third child was born. Because we did not know what was killing the kids because there was no test. Because we do not hit every head, you must know to test it. After me now testing 2002, it was very surprising when the men testing me in Khartoum saw the result. They disappeared in the facility. I was left alone in the facility. I did not know what to do, how to go. So what I did, I had to wait until I called him and come here. It is not your business, it's my business. It's me who come, need to be tested. Just give me the results. If you don't want to say anything, give me the paper. So I was able to give me the I was able to give me the paper. That was two, 2002. That was before the peace. Then when I come back to Juba, when my wife passed on, and then 2003, 2004, I established an association. Now I thought the only medicine is to establish an association in Juba to work, and then they should be supported. And I had a connection with the SEC in Khartoum. Now the drugs begin coming from Khartoum. We are buying. That was 2003-2004. We can buy a drug for 150. That's when my wife has passed the one. So it was a challenge that uh, you were going through. You don't know when you would be there because by then, when the news of TB was happening, it's like when the you are dying every every time you die. So we in the family, a religious family, then I said it is the will of God. If I have to stay, it's the will of God. If I have to die, let me die. Just that. Uh, did it first affected you? Did, did you feel so affected? Of course, of course. Why, why me? Why me? That's very clearly in the HIV. When the news broke to you, you ask yourself, why is this happening? And you don't know what this, where does it come from? Yeah. Because when you have a family, you have a home, you don't know how it in, infected the family. You don't know that how it comes to you because you may, may be following, you are not going uh, stroboglial and everything else, and only you found yourself positive. That was a very serious situation, I tell you. It was a challenge, and I didn't know what was happening. And then what I did was it's the will of God. That day I just entered in, I lie down, I prayed, and then I left it like that. Okay. From there, we, we begin uh, creating an, uh, an association in 2004, and there were no people. Uh, when I go around with the other uh, partners, and I'm trying to train counselors. Where we had councillors from Court A, councillors from ACC, councillors from, uh, from the Minister of Health, then we come up like 45 councillors. And with the 32 people who are positive like me. So that's how I established that situation in 2004. And uh, when uh, the CCDB came to Juba, that was 2004, then I presented the paper. He was able to send funds to Southern Sudan when the Southern Sudan was still in the no peace. So when they send the fund to the NDP, we are able now to do activities. 
and then WF2 also very positive. I wrote the smoke concern now. They also <coughs> give us food support to the people who are positive. Now they begin growing. They begin growing and support is there. And I was paying the orphans with school fees. I organized something monthly with Slaughter and Iran in the, in, the, in the SEC. And that ran when Slaughter, they bring people together testimony. I bring ministers, I bring bishops, I bring them to, to encourage the, 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 the people who are living together with me. So, and, and I tell you, those who are encouraged, those bishops come every month to sit in the hall and then we take the testimonies and encourage the world that this is the will of God. Some people survived with me up to today. And those who had the stigma, because what I know, the stigma is not killing people fear in this, not the stigma sometimes. Immediately in 2004, Global Fund came in. The Global Company came in with the drugs, we were able to establish the Jupiter's Hospital, and then it was a very, a very, very clear day that day. When the drugs arrived, I was having my office in the blood bank of the association. My office was in the blood bank. And before me, there people lying who have not a drug. So our doctor was a poor dealer. Then he said, we don't give the drugs because we need the protocol to be developed. I said, don't they leave the protocol away. The drug has come, I have to give now. I get the drug, give to this, but this will survive all after having this. Because these drugs are very effective. The moment you get it, it will begin biting the virus, then it reduces the suppresses, then the, 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 the normality came. Because they were saying if you have CD4 is below below 200, then you give a banana. I, I, those who are even below 200 by then, because they were not taking the drugs, and the fear is taking by then. That one really took us a fear, but later on with the drug, we survived up to today. You can then maybe, uh, who has been your biggest support in this journey, and how has it helped you? Let me say that the, the first thing is when you're diagnosed, you immediately ask any other treatment, whether with any other disease else, not necessarily HIV and AIDS. When you go to the hospital, medical like that, just maybe cancer, do I need that for cancer? That was the main thing. Think that the global fund became the main support because immediately when you are yeah, 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 yeah. Immediately we say that's a drug. We get the medicine, and this is the biggest support we are looking for. And then people who are giving counseling, people who encourage you through counseling, the lives like that, take it easy. And then uh, we begin interacting with the, with the other neighboring countries, doing workshops. I must travel the whole world anyway. <laughs> I must, I've already traveled the whole world anyway. With, when I started in 2004, 2005, 2005 we started with uh, Algeria. When we established an association in Algeria, it was a challenge, but we make it that we do it. We do it, determination is there. I put the determination that we do it until we are we end. Yeah. Uh, and then maybe uh, since then, mm. have you ever been discriminated or stigmatized because of your status? You see, the important thing is when you declare, you don't see the external, the external discrimination. Because you have declared free, and the, the problem is when you have. We call uh, the, 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 we call it the, uh, the individual uh, uh, stigma. What we call internal stigma. When you have your own isolated stigma, then you are already having a big problem. But when I declare I work free, I do energy free, I do the work the, 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 the work of the agent free. Those who discriminate are from behind my back. I don't care. They were saying this man is moving like this. Those those issues are there, but I don't care because I've already decided the journey. I've decided the journey. I know this discrimination is there. Where is this? Sometimes they, they say, ah, this one is dying in the next three months, or it's the next uh, five months. But I say, no, this is the will of God. This is the will of God. That's right. Those are the things that are there. Well, Uncle Lonle, maybe to people who are watching you here, mm -hmm. maybe what could be your message, especially to the people living with HIV and they are afraid to come out and speak out? What could be your message to them or to the public? You see, the issue is uh, in HIV. It is the knowledge. If you are given the basic fact about the knowledge, there's treatment, and then you declare status, it is good. But the problem is because people have not got the knowledge, the information, correct information. As you get the correct information, thereafter, you, you understand, you ask the medicine, they are giving treatment, and already many people are there who can give you much testimony, how they have not gone more than 20 years. Without, without, without any, any, any problem. And they may even uh, go more than that. Like myself, if they started in 1995, up to today, up to 2004, how many years now? If you can play this, they've gone more than that. But they are telling the public that do not isolate yourself. Come out, declare status, come to us, we direct you, give you the information, we give you the knowledge, then there's no problem with it.
it's not like a city debt like before. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for speaking to the radio community. Okay. Thank you.